So stigma. Stigma refers to general disapproval of a group of person with certain characteristic that sets them apart from other members of society. It affects people from all walks of life, be it associated with illness, obesity, sexual orientation, or being single, being divorced, you name it. People who are being stigmatized often feel rejected, inferior, or shame. So what is it like to live with stigma? And what does it take to overcome it? I was born in Sungai Buloh, in a hospital inside the National Leprosy Control Center. This is a, is the world's second largest leprosy settlement. My mom and dad are formerly leprosy patients. Such a truthful revelation about myself would have been unimaginable years ago, but I've come a long way since. Leprosy is a much dreaded disease in the history of humankind. Since ancient times, leprosy patients were often treated as social outcasts. Look, society view leprosy as a kind of divine punishment, and therefore the patients were perceived as unclean. So besides having to, to suffer physically, the patients often have to endure the mental torment because of social stigma. And the family members will not share, will not spare from this humiliation and discrimination either. Very often, family members cut ties with leprosy patients. Just a fast fact about leprosy. It is not highly contagious. It's not hereditary. That means it doesn't pass from the parents to the children. It takes a long-term and close contact with an untreated patient for the disease to be transmitted to the other person. And only if the other person's immunity is low. But the myth that leprosy is hereditary, extend the stigma to the descendants like me. So when I was ready to go to school, I was told never to mention who my parents were, lie if I have to. Many of my childhood friends whose parents' medical history was exposed in school have to suffer being ostracized throughout their school life. It was a traumatic experience for them. I had it easier compared to them. As a child, I always heard stories from the patients being treated in a humiliating manner outside the settlement. And yet, they refer to people outside as good people, as in people in good health, and they themselves as lepers, which is a very self-deprecating term. That's what stigma has done to them. They have come to think that they belong in the lower class of the society. My first lesson of stigma was when a school friend related a story her father told her about. So with a look of horror on her face, she said, you know, as this place called Sungai Bolo, they lock up people who have leprosy. They're not allowed to come out. Nobody dares to go in there because they will spread the disease to other people. Upon hearing that, I finally understood what my parents were trying to do. They want to protect me. And since then, I kept my mouth shut. That was stigma chapter 1.0 in my life. As I entered adolescence, I find that I was different from the other girls. I don't share their interest in boys. In fact, I was attracted to the member of my own gender. At first, I didn't give it much thought until I heard this new term called homosexuality. It is a new term, but I was happy that I come to know it because it described how I felt. Nobody has ever told me before. But before I could share this with my friends, there's another shocking discovery. People hate homosexuals. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a single positive remark I've heard about homosexuality. They talk about gays and lesbians in disgust. 
it, it, it seems like the whole world was against them. And I realized that it, it was me that they were, they were referring to. My natural instinct taught me to retreat into my closet before I was found out. That was the beginning of Stigma Chapter 2.0 in my life. And this is much bigger than Stigma 1.0. Whenever there were conversations about gays and lesbians, I would act indifferently. I just pretend that I don't care. But inside, I was dying to know more. I need information. But information then was scarce. There was no internet. If any, they were mostly negative. The media portrayal of, of gay and lesbian's character are heavily distorted. So without anyone to guide me, I almost believe what they say about people like me. I was in constant battle between staying true to my own feelings or, or conform with societal norm. It wore me out and it just pushed me deeper into the closet. And only this time, I was alone in the closet. It was dark and it's, it was rotten. People say the years they spent in school were the happiest, but it wasn't true for me. I turned to denial in dealing with my sexuality. Most of the time, I was deluding myself and saying everything was fine. The feeling is like you keep a part of yourself that you don't wish to see locked in a safe. Throw away the keys and you walk around without the missing part you will always feel incomplete. So I seek validation elsewhere to prove my own worth, such as academic achievements. I was harsh on myself. Most of the time, I was wearing a camouflage. I, I wore it even when I was alone. And there were moments where I would dare myself to take the hidden part out of the box and, and look at it. And I would ask myself, who can I tell this to? Will they accept me? And how do I move on from here? There isn't any answer. There's no way out. So I had to put it back and put my camouflage back on. I, I had a vivid memory of a particular moment when I was alone with myself. I made a vow to bring this secret to my grave. Even if it means I will be alone for the rest of my life. Such was the impact of the stigma had on me. Of course, sharing something as personal as this is not a comfortable thing to do. But why do I care to do it? Because it could be your story too. Someone with similar experience might be listening. Stigma puts people within the walls. These walls a jointly built by those inside and outside of it. Those who are being stigmatized need this wall as a form of protection, a space for us to breathe freely, no matter how small it is. To the people outside the walls, these walls would use to define us. And very often they decorate these walls with various forms of stereotypes. I mean, look around us. How many of us are even realized that we are living inside these walls? These walls limit our belief system. It makes us believe that we are lesser and abnormal. This is so disruptive to our self-esteem. To the extent that we have a sense of shame in admitting who we are. So, we then seek relief in this all too familiar century called denial. And what, and what does denial do to us? It disconnects us from ourselves, our true self. Right? And these walls will continue to grow higher by feeding on our negative belief. It grows so high that one day we lost sight of what it is like on the outside. We fear going over the wall into the unknown. So we'd rather stay safe inside. And now, this walls has become our self-imposed prison. 
I came to the realization that I have to break out from this wall because it has become so suffocating as the walls were closing in on me. It drained my energy, having to pretend to be someone whom I think everyone would approve of. I need to know how is it to live without these walls. So I set myself on a breakout mission. And this turned out to be a long journey. This journey, or this mission, was the best decision that I've ever made. It made me into who I am today. This journey brought me through a series of processes, and these processes elevated me higher and higher towards the top of the wall before I could take the final leap and escape. The first stage of elevation, self-honesty. It is about acknowledging who we are and accepting it. It sounds easy, right? No. For a person who has been in denial for years, this is the first and foremost hurdle. It was the most uncomfortable process. Over the years, I learned to put up a front and convince myself that I'm strong and infallible. It took me a long time to unpeel the layer of camouflage I had on before I can get an objective look at myself. And I still remember the strong resistance to what I saw. I saw my weaknesses, my lack of self-esteem, my fear, and many more. My, my ego wouldn't just let me admit that this is who I was. It struggled with itself for a long time. The turning point finally came when one day I decided to sit down and just say to myself, yes, this is who I am. This is exactly how I feel, and that's okay. And, you know, almost instantly, I, I felt the weight being lifted off my chest. Such was the power of acceptance. And then I was ready to move on. The second elevation of us is courage. I wouldn't have done it without courage. As a, as a very famous quote goes, courage is not the absence of fear. It is acknowledging our fear and doing it anyway. Courage helped me to look at my vulnerability. It pushed me forward. I can tell you that it is very rewarding when you discover the inner strength you ne never knew you had. As I'm more aware of myself and open my heart for honest conversation, I started to appreciate myself more. I grew to love myself despite all the flaws. This self-love empowered me with the strength to take charge of my own feelings, to reclaim my self-esteem. And finally, that's how far I've come. The only thing I need to do is just to leap over. And this will be a leap of faith because I don't know what's waiting for me on the outside. But I have faith that everything will be fine. I have faith that the love and courage I found will see me through. So, I took the leap. I started off by coming out to a few trusted friends. I was so vulnerable because I'm sharing a very important and yet fragile part of me with them, and I do not know how they would react. But it all went well. That opened the door to more coming out experiences. A few years later, I co-authored a book about my birthplace in Sumai Bulo, titled Valley of Hope. And I made public my identity as the descendant of former leprosy patients. I gained many friends, and I lost none. Living life outside the walls, or rather without these walls, is liberating. There are many challenges ahead still, but living a truthful life make it all worthwhile. I feel so much lighter without those camouflage, and yet so grounded. It feels great to be whole again. I am now in a lifelong romance with myself. It is a relationship built on trust, respect, and unconditional love. This love connects me to my inner core. It lets me appreciate and 
be myself. I know many of us will deal with various kinds of stigma in our life. We may not be able to eradicate this deep-rooted stigma, but it is within our power to rise above it. Our society will still be plagued with stigma as long as people are ignorant. People fear what they don't understand. They need labels to comprehend those who are different from them. Along with these labels comes assumptions, stereotypes, a, um, a judgment, and hence the stigma. What follows naturally is a boundary between us and them. People who are being stigmatized are silenced by the shame. But this silence is not golden. This silence promotes ignorance and it amplifies the vicious cycle of stigma. We can break the cycle by breaking the silence. As much as we do not wish to be seen, we are the, the best spokesperson. What is more effective than hearing it from the person affected, than reading a whole bunch of facts from statistics and researchers? By being visible, we are doing a service for those who are still trapped inside. I wish my 18-year-old self could hear me today. Sometimes I would imagine that if I could, I could write a letter and send it back in time to her, this is what I would like to say. I actually wrote it. <laughs> Dear 18-year-old self, Hi, I am the future you. I want you to know that you are loved today for who you are not because of your achievements. So let your guard down and stop being too hard on yourself. I know you are lost and doubting yourself. Let me tell you that you are not alone. There are many out there who are like you and they too are afraid to come out. Years of trying to protect yourself has hardened you. I remember how you stare at the mirror and have to look away because it's hard for you to accept who you are. I remember those dead law conversations you had with yourself because you have nobody to talk to. If only I could be there to tell you that you will find your way out one day. You will decide that you had enough and break out from the cocoon of denial. You will find the strength to face yourself and help others with your experience. You will rediscover and reconnect with yourself. Well, the stigma hasn't changed much though, but you have. You learn to love yourself. You are still vulnerable, but you no longer run away from it, right, like you do now. And yes, wait till you feel how amazing it is to be completely in the space with your whole being. You may not know what I'm saying now, but you'll get there, I promise. Whenever you feel defeated, remember this. Never be ashamed of your story. Your experience shapes who you are. Always love and be proud of yourself. Sign love, your future self. Thank you.